From the Sonia Show, JetJurgens.com, and Assignment X. In a world where vampires live among us, at a time when a band of thieves is robbing all of the blood banks, a wise-cracking priest and his vampire brother-in-law stand between a peaceful society and a worldwide bloodbath. Sonia Mansfield. Hey, will you drink this and tell me if it's blood? Christopher Allen Smith. I will never tell you about our secret plan. Damn it, I told you we had a secret plan. Peter Brown. I guess you could say this really sucks. Get it? And Betty White as Harrison Ford. Get off my plane. This is Dorking Out About Trailers. Welcome to episode three of Dorking Out About Trailers, a podcast about previews, teasers, trailers, and the movies that they promise us. With me today is my co-host, professional writer and author of The Sonia Show, Sonia Mansfield. And with me today is my co-host, Emmy Award-winning filmmaker and nerd writer, Christopher Allen Smith. And with both of us today is Peter Brown, associate editor of Assignment X and the newest co-host in the dorking out constellation of stars. Even though this is our third episode, we're probably going to describe you like that for the next year. <laughs> Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. good. We are excited for all of the ridiculous trailers that we are going to do today. Right. So, Sonia, before we get, begin, is there anything that you would like to say? Yes. This is a watch-along podcast, you guys. So in our show notes, we've got links to all these trailers. And when you hear this sound... You can go watch them and then come back for our wise insights. All right. That's right. But before we begin, we when we first started doing dorking out trailers, we did it as special bulletins. And we've been giving predictions on Rotten Tomatoes for the scores of the movies and with, that we were previewing. Well, a good chunk of the movies have now come out so we can look at Who's ahead in the Rotten Tomatoes prediction race? That's right. You, We know that you loyal dorking out listeners have been waiting to see where this is going since last July when we first started doing these. And now you know. So, for those of you listening for the first time, this is how the game works. Um, we watch previews. We give our scores. And whoever gets closest wins. It's like golf. Apparently, so I'm told. The person with the lowest <laughs> score wins. So, out. What's already come out is Blair Witch, Doctor Strange, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, woo. The, woo, the Space Between Us, and Rings. They've all come out. Well, we're not going to go through every movie in our predictions. I'm sorry. But we do have the running scores. So far in last place is Smith. <laughs> Sucker. It's not even close. He, he thought Doctor Strange was going to be 72 and it turned out to be 90. He predicted 17 for Triple X, the return of Xander Cage, and it turned out to be 44, which I still think is a little high for that movie. Uh, me too. Smith, Smith, on average, is 19.3 points off the real score. That is a ouch. lot. Yes. Ouch, ouch, ouch. All right, so next in the race is Sonia, and she predicted a 60 for Fantastic Beasts. Turns out it was 73. For some reason, she predicted 75 <laughs> for Blair Witch, but it only got a 36 on Rotten Tomatoes. And so, on average, Sonia is 15.5 points off in her predictions. And in first... Sad. It's, it's very... Yep, yeah, sad. sad. Pathetic. Sad. Unfair. That's Terrible. That's Fake right. news. And in first place, by quite a bit... That's right, baby. By process of elimination, 
if there was another way we could do it, we would do it that way, is Peter <laughs> Brown. So he predicted a third, 38 for Triple X. It was 44, so he was just six off there. He predicted a 21 for Rings. Its final Rotten Tomato score was five. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> on average, Peter is just 8.3 points off. So he is pretty close. And I think when our next batch comes out uh, on the next episode of Dorking Out About Trailers, he is going to be even better. So congratulations, right. you bastard. Well, I think if there's one thing that we can garner from all this is is that you just need to listen to me. Pretty much. Forget about these other two people on this podcast. You just have to listen to me and you figure it all out. Guaranteed. That's why I call, that's why I call him Master P. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, no, I would, I, would, I would love to argue with you, but the data is completely on your side. So I got I have no leg to stand on. I at this point now I'm a little bit fascinated of why I'm so off. Why my <laughs> predictions are so wrong almost consistently 20 points off. I it's it's a mystery to me. So And now I feel all this pressure. It's not a mystery to me. <laughs> right. And now I'm now I'm like under the pressure though. Now it's like if I if I like start screwing up and have like twenty points off or whatever, I'm gonna be like, no. That's right. No. <laughs> like my average. That's right. When you're number one, when you're on top, there's only one way to go. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. I'm gunning for you. All right. So uh, for this week, we are doing Power Rangers, the Belko Experiment, Wilson, Colossal, Aftermath, Snatched. And because Peter Brown demanded it, Transformers. The and first because night. you love it. No. Because Chris has seen no. every Transformers no. movie. I am not going to see this movie. I yes, am not you are. going to do it. No. All right. He is. <laughs> so, uh, with all of that being said, let's take a look at the first trailer Saban's. Power Rangers. So, Sonya Mansfield, would you like to start us off? Uh, sure. I was just wondering if this movie is going to end with giant monsters fighting and smashing into buildings. <laughs> I think it is. Wherever would you get that idea from? I think it's because it's like every other movie that has come out in the last five years. And it just maybe happens to be in this very trailer. That too. Uh, What did what did they have on Brian Cranston to get him for this movie? You know, I love the story. That is the only thing I'm interested about when it comes to this movie. He was in the original Power Rangers back in the 90s or the 80s and 90s. Really? Yes. Hmm. That and and he's kind of got. My understanding is he kind of has a soft spot. For the Power Rangers, for having that gig, I think he did voiceover or something. Uh, so yeah, when so he he wants to be involved. That's I love Brian Cranston so much. I know that's the that's the kind of thing. It's it seems like such a nice guy thing to do. It's like, hey, you guys knew me way back when. Now I'm king of the world. But screw it, I'll be in Power Rangers. Let's hmm. go. You know, I I wonder if kids will be into this. Actually, like. It doesn't look like something that's going to appeal to the people who were into it in the 90s, but it could be something that would be like younger, not younger. I say like teenagers on the young side might be into. Right. Yeah, that that, that's kind of what I'm thinking is. uh, Let's see. He did. Yeah. He provided the voice of Snizzard and Twin Man. (laughs) During the first season of, of Mighty course. Morphin Power Rangers, so uh, I mean, there's just there's nothing in that preview that makes me think like this is a movie for me, right? Yeah, personally, I, just... I mean, it even has like you know, you were born for this, and <laughs> I will destroy everything. It's you know, pretty yeah. silly. Yeah, yeah. You what know, do you guys think? I I'm with you. I would love to kick it around, but it's like it's not for me. It, 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 it's like it's like a, one of those stereotypical cartoon uh, opera lovers going to a heavy metal 
concert and then crapping all over it. It's like, lady, this isn't for you. Why are you even here? Right. So, yeah, this is uh, this is not for me. Not really excited about it. It looks, I mean, it looks like, a, you know, a not ridiculously gritty update. It looks like just, all right, we're making a big screen movie of this silly idea. God knows we've seen a lot of silly ideas, you know, given huge budgets and turn out to be fun or somewhat enjoyable movies. Even even if this thing gets good reviews, I don't. Th- I still don't think I'm going to go see it. I'm not that interested. But yeah, I could kind of like give or take. Me, Peter, what do you think? Um, yeah, you know, I can see probably like this appealing to maybe third graders, maybe fourth graders, boys. You know, um, I don't know if teens are going to be down for this. I'm not exactly sure. Actually, it's a, it's an interesting. It's an interesting idea, that's for sure. And I like the trailer could actually look a lot worse. It's actually, for the most part, not a badly done trailer. Right. Uh, the wallhead thing with Brian Cranston is pretty super cheesy, but the, you know that's kind of a throwback to the to the series. Right. Um, you know, like like you guys are saying though, I don't see a mass appeal here for a lot of people. I see it kind of just real niche kind of preteen boys maybe. Which I'm not yeah, even I'm, sure. Maybe that, that was the audience before, too. I'm not even – I never watched Power Rangers, so I don't even know. I right. think that it was, right? Wasn't it kind of like 11 and 12-year-old boys? I think it was. Now, what's Like fun- right before they discovered girls? Yeah. Yeah. You know- I, will say, I will say this, though. They had that little preview to the trailer preview thing. Again God, I hate one. that yeah, so much. It's just like totally annoying, and I really hope that does not become a trend. It may already be a trend. Oh, it's definitely um, a trend. Yeah, I, I and think, then this is yeah. – sorry, go ahead. No, I, I actually, we, there are some other previews that we put in the show notes that we might do on the next episode, and I noticed it on all of them. Like they'll take uh, – basically, they'll take the best joke – Put it in right. the first five seconds, and then they'll start the. Pre- yeah, I don't know why. Don't have time so for the fifty-second trailer. Here's the yeah. five-second trailer. <laughs> exactly. Yes, my attention span is so terrible that I cannot sit through a minute and a half trailer. I have to have a five-second intro to that trailer, and otherwise, I'm just clicking on. Yes, of a joke that I'm going to see in forty seconds. Anyway, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I will so. say also, this is another trailer that yet again gives away the entire movie. And there's no reason for people to go see this yeah. movie because it's all there. You know, they yeah. found their powers. They got trained. They yeah. had a little funny moment in between. The big boss man comes. They fight. They become a giant robot. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Well, you know, got that's going to be a reoccurring theme of this podcast, I think. <laughs> I was I was about to exactly. poop all over it. But, but then I just realized because I was never into the Power Rangers. But back in the 70s, there was a show called Ultraman. Uh, oh, yeah. I liked Ultraman. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Think about yeah. Ultraman, Sonia, and then think about Power Rangers, and what's the difference? Right. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I was just I was just a kid. <laughs> exactly. That's a thing. Now, here's the thing. Is if... I was like seven or eight probably exactly. when I watched Ultraman. So... Exactly. Ultraman was a guy who he touched this thing and he would turn into this giant guy and he fought monsters every week. It was like a, it was a television version of a Godzilla ripoff. Here's the thing is if in the early 90s, if a big budget serious version of Ultraman had been made, I definitely would have gone to see it. Oh yeah. So yeah. Th- so that's yeah. true. And plus, I am you know we're 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 sounding like old people, crapping all over the Power <laughs> Rangers. Uh, this Power Rangers has been a monster hit for years around the world. So I'm sure this is going to be huge. However, I think it's one of those pieces of culture that people like to kick around. So I think it's going to have a hard time with Rotten Tomatoes. Sonya Mansfield, what is your score? Prediction. I'm going to say 50. 50. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because that's my, that was going to be my score and now I got to figure. I got to make up some I got to make up some ground so I got to make a move. Peter, what's your what's your <laughs> Actually, you know what? Well, I don't care about Sonia. Peter, what's your prediction? That's what's uh-huh, most important. That's right. <laughs> um, I'm going to go 41. <laughs> Okay, 41. All right. 41. 
You know, it's funny. I was going to say 60. I was going to say it will be surprisingly well received. But then I just calculated that's literally 19 points off your score. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say, <laughs> ah, God, this is killing me. You're, you're going to say 42. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to say 60. I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to say 61. No, hold on. Sorry. I'm going to say 59. I think it's going to be. Those two points are going to get you. Well, they might. We'll see. <laughs> Because I, I don't think enough critics are going to love this movie that it's going to push it over the top, but I think it's not going to get kicked around as much as you would expect. So, all right. With all of that having been said, the next movie up is The Belco Experiment. Uh, we got this description off the web. A, web, a twisted social experiment. A, in, a, in a twisted social experiment. A group of 80 Americans are locked in a high-rise corporate office in Bogota, Colombia, and ordered by an unknown voice coming from the company's intercon system to participate in a deadly game of kill or be killed. Let's take a look. Peter, what do you think? So, little known fact about me, I am a huge Battle Royale fan. That's the oh, Japanese I, classic I ne- movie. Yeah, I never where, saw that. Yeah, where they, they ship a whole bunch of students off to a, a deserted island and they make them fight to the death until there's one person left, right? Which which then Hunger Games basically stole. Right. Exactly. Well, <laughs> in a way, in a way. And then they had a whole bunch of sequels which were really, really bad. Uh, but the original Battle Royale is, like, amazing. Um, so this... And everything I've read about this movie is unapologetically an homage to uh, Battle Royale. But like with the whole corporate kind of slant, which kind of, you know, that whole climbing the corporate ladder thing gives kind of that whole new meaning. Um, So I love these type of movies. I'm totally, excuse me, I'm totally down to go see it. Um, James Gunn wrote it. So that I trust in him. And so I am I'm happy to see this. I, I I really am looking forward to it. Definitely. I am not It look uh, Yeah. You know, uh, keep going, Sonia. I was gonna say it looks like the worst team building exercise ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It's it looks well, you know what? I just I love the thing I love about genre movies and TV shows is the way that they can take things that are going on in everyday lives and or, or you know issues that are going on in society or whatever and tweak them and mess with them and make them ridiculous and compelling and scary and crazy. And I have to say, I am so into this movie. I am not a horror <laughs> guy. I am not. I have not seen Battle Royale, but I am very excited for this movie. I am. I think this is going to be huge. James Gunn is a great director. He's. I I love him. I'm just I'm lo- I'm loving everything about this. I love the 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 cast. I I'm. I don't have a whole lot more articulate to say other than this just seems the perfect movie. For the mood and the tenor of what's going on in the country right now. Um, uh, you know, an ultimate crazy, horrible black comedy. I'm loving this. I think it's going to be huge. What What has James Gunn done before? Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy okay. one and okay. two. He okay. also did. I think I he, thought so. I just I wanted to make sure. He also that, that I was thinking of the right person. Wrote Dawn of the Dead, the new Dawn of the Dead. He did. Um, let's see. Hold on. Super. I think there's some something else he did. Oh come on, he did Slither. Slither, right? Which I have. Which is a uh, which yeah, was, yeah. had uh, Nathan Fillion in it, yeah. and it was a uh, small town gets taken over by these slugs. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that, that was really good too. He wrote the specials also way back when. That was wow. That was yeah. That was 15 years ago. That was one of the original uh, superhero parodies. Um, yeah. So, what uh, what's your score, Peter? Well, I don't I don't know if everybody's gonna like 
appreciate it the way that I may appreciate it or think, or at least at least I think it's going to be. So um, I'm going to say um, 72. 72. Okay. Sonia Mansfield. I'm going to say 75. 75. Price is right in me again. Hold on, 75, 72. I... I think this. I think people are really gonna like this. I think between the creative team, the setup, the metaphor of, you know, office politics taken to ridiculous extremes and horrible. I think people are really gonna like this. But there is a contingent of critics that just like to kick around horror movies, no matter how good they are. Um, so I'm gonna say eighty-one. That's my. That's my. Prediction. All right. So, all right. Which brings us to Wilson, starring Woody Harrelson, Laura Dern, and Judy Green. Directed by Craig Johnson, who did a movie that I liked a couple years ago called The Skeleton Twins. Which I think that movie makes me predict Bill Hader. I've said it before. He's going to win an Oscar one of these days if he would just... Focus and get the right Forrest Gump type role. He's the new Tom Hanks. You heard it here first. Um, written by Daniel Clowns, who wrote Ghost World. Um, Wilson is a highly is about a lonely, neurotic, and hilariously honest middle aged man reunites with his estranged wife and meets his teenage daughter for the first time. Let's take a look. I am a big fan of Ghost World. It was one of my favorite movies the year it came out. And I really like this trailer. Like, this looks like a movie I will love. Yes. I, I love I love Woody Harrelson. I think he makes such good choices, such interesting choices. I love Laura Dern. I'm really excited for this one. The, tra- the, the trailer made me laugh out loud several times. Yeah, you know, yeah. Especially when he's on the train and he's on the guy's home. There's a lot of empty seats here. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> I feel like I've been that person on BART. Right. <laughs> Peter, what are you thinking? So <clears throat> when, I, when I found out we were reviewing this, I thought it was, uh, first it was a castaway spinoff movie <laughs> following the adventures of the Wilson! soccer ball after tom the hanks volleyball. You know, like, the volleyball thank you it Wilson! was uh, you know gets picked up by uh some fishing net and then you know the following adventures of the anyway i would i would see that movie too <laughs> uh yeah you know this film is if you if you've heard this podcast you probably already know what i'm going to say this is not a film for me um uh, I respect it in the fact that, uh, you know, it looks like it's going to be funny, but it's a little too quirky for me. I'm not really kind of the person who likes kind of quirky movies. So, um, yeah, you know, I could see it being popular, however. So, yeah, you know, you think Smith? Well, yeah, I, as I've gr- gotten older, I've noticed that I've kind of independent movies have a kind of quirky thing that they do. It's almost like each level of movies or each kind of genre of movies or each community of movies, I should say, have their own things that they do a lot. Like with big blockbusters, you know, it became like a fad a couple of years ago to have the big gong things in the previews, the big horns. Um, independent movies have this kind of, oh, we're going to have... This schlubby guy who's kind of a screw up and he's funny, but he's also kind of a jerk. And we're going to watch him as he, you know, drives the women in his life crazy and he kind of fumbles through stuff like some sort of man child, but it's a little bit more realistic than a Will Ferrell movie. Um, and it's <laughs> just, I would love to, I, so I'm liking this movie, but I'm, it's almost like I've seen this circus before what I would love to see 
is this exact same movie and and you know this is I'm 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 about to do something that I'm constantly counseling people against, which is talking about the movie I would like to see rather than the one that the filmmakers decide to do, spend their lives making. I would love to see nearly exactly this same movie from Laura Dern's point of view, <laughs> which is she's got, and it would just, same actor, same character, same whatever, but rather than let's let's watch the doofus learn to be a man kind of thing or learn to be a father or whatever, let's watch the woman who's married to this silly narcissistic schmuck realize that her marriage is over, realize she can't bring up a, a child with this guy, d- you know, decides to get rid of him, puts a kid up for adoption. Then 17 years later, her, the doofus is back having discovered the daughter and kind of, it, it's essentially the same movie, but I would love to see it from the point of view in, in a lot of these movies in a lot of pop culture there's the doofus man child guy and the smart sighing put upon woman in his life and it's always right. told from the I didn't, her point of view i didn't get or that impression from this i didn't get that from this trailer at all i don't think he looks like a man child and i don't think she looks like a sign wife really okay well yeah I, did, not... I didn't get that impression at all okay. however i will say i think all movies that have laura dern <laughs> should be told from laura dern's point of view because i think she's awesome <laughs> yeah that's right um so jurassic yeah. park included i was just i was almost gonna make that joke uh <laughs> that would have been interesting so and yeah, i agree with it i i so i like this movie but i'm I feel like I've seen this kind of quirky guy before, um, so so we'll see. I, but I do feel that is one of the things is that you know horror movies have a lot of innate things that they go through that seem to rub critics the wrong way. Movies like this seem to have a lot of quirky character moments and certain types of observations on in li- on life that critics disproportionately love i would say so i think this is gonna do well with the critics um and this one what's i think you, this one comes out number? march 24th oh no 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 we're not doing this anymore peter's going first from now on <laughs> uh so this one might put me in a little pretzel in terms of my average but uh i'm gonna say go i i agree with what you just said chris completely and for that, I am going to go with 67. 67. All right, Sonya Mansfield. I disagree with both of you. Okay. And I'm going to say 88. 88. Um, you know what? You know, because I, I think that is one of the things that's interesting about the show is part of us has to talk about the movie from just what we're expecting and what kinds of movies we like and whatever and then part of us has to predict critics mm-hmm. so for me i i i think i'm between you guys i'm interested in this movie i really like the skeleton twins um but there's just a couple things that you know set me off um so i'm going to say i i'm going to say uh, you know what i'm going to say 80 um yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be right. good, but um, yeah. So all right. Yep, yep, that one might get me in trouble. We'll see. We'll see. Um, next up, this one I am really looking forward to is called Colossal. After a drunken night, after a drunken night out, a woman wakes up to find Seoul, Korea, torn apart by a huge monster. She goes on to find out that she and the monster are psychically linked. This one stars Anne Hathaway, Jason Sudeikis, Dan Stevens, and Tim Blake Nelson. It is directed, I am almost wondering if this is a misprint, by Nacho Vigolando. Is this a real word? I'm sure this is a real name, but I find that hard to believe that that is somebody's real first name is Nacho. 
Anyway, <laughs> Colossal comes out April 7th. Let's take a look at it. I am so excited for this movie. That is his name. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sonia, why don't yes. you go first on this one? I don't want to go first. You go first. Yeah, All you go right. First. All right. Fine. Um, I think this is a great, you know, this could be one of those great metaphor movies where she's putting up with all this, you know what, in her life. For some reason, it produces this this rage monster, this destroying soul, and she's got to figure out what's going on with her life and what she needs to work through and what she's angry about and what she's whatever. I could love this movie. It just looks so much fun. I I am not a huge Anne Hathaway fan. Um, <laughs> there's something about her that just rubs me the wrong way, and I can never really buy in. Um, I think that's true for most people about Anne Hathaway, actually. Is it? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Okay. Peter, do you like Anne Hathaway? Um, I liked her in The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, I liked uh, her there. That's maybe it. I liked her in The Dark Knight Rises. Um, That's what I meant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that too. I think I think she comes across as a little. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Stuffy. Yeah. And uh, like like she's trying too hard. Yeah. You know, especially when she won her Oscar, like everyone was like, "Ugh, whatever." Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. You know what? That now that I'm thinking about it, like it would be interesting to see um Charlize Theron in her bad teacher vibe in this role. I think that is one thing that's maybe has me a little nervous about this movie. Are you is, talking about Cameron Diaz? What did I say? Charlize Theron. Oh yeah. Wow. How did I get those two mixed up? Um yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, but having Anne Hathaway in it, I'm just not, she, she seems to, I don't know, like if she's not going to have quite the right energy for that kind of messed up. And maybe I'm projecting, I'm, I'm assuming because she's kind of waking up hungover and all this, that she's got that kind of thing, um, where she's so kind I, of, but the but impression I was getting was maybe she's kind of a drunk yeah is the impression i was getting right. from this yeah. and that she's drinking too much and while she's drinking too much this monster is destroying korea right but she, and she's connected to it and she doesn't realize what she's doing while she's drinking right Ooh. Maybe so that's it, kind of the so impression. A, ooh, I like that a lot too. She's it's like a metaphor that's, for drunkenness or maybe, alcoholism. That's kind of that's kind of how I took it. You know, at least I initially, be, I think that's what's happening. I yes. think you might be right. And I and I think that's a really interesting idea, and it makes it like an interesting trailer to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that it doesn't show you everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to give you the premise, or why would you go? But right, like, right. And that, I, that but I, not everything. Yeah, I'm, I agree. With. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is one of those movies that comes out on on demand and in theaters at the same time. But I could sweet. Be, that means I could see it. I could be wrong about that. <laughs> so, um, all right. What do you think, Peter? Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know. Uh. I know a lot of people like freaking love kaiju movies um even pacific rim mm -hmm. uh i know a lot of people you guys didn't like it but i know I, a lot of people did like it. i know i have like one of my good friends she loves that movie it's like her favorite movie she watches <laughs> it all the time i like I'm the all, idea it it didn't do it for me but <laughs> yeah i understand so I, I don't think the people who like kaiju movies are going to like go full scale revolt on this just because it's like a comedic kaiju film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if those type of people who like monster movies are going to be down for seeing Anne Hathaway kind of be a, be jokingly towards it. Because, you know, this is causing all this death, destruction and mayhem. And they're basically, you know, making it funny. So, um 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to how this is going to play out. Um, it's interesting. It's definitely an yeah. interesting movie. Yeah. It's definitely different. That's for sure. Which yeah. is, in my in my book, is is fine. I'm actually happy it's different, but I just don't know how it's going to be received. Yeah. No, that's you're right. Yeah. All right. So having said all that, what's your what's your prediction, Le- leader of the pack? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. All right, Sonia Mansfield, what's yours? I'm gonna say eighty. Eighty. I'm gonna say fifty-five. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think it's one of those movies that's a great idea. And I've seen Jason Sudeikis in a lot of these where and and usually what they do is they kind of show up on iTunes and it's like I didn't I don't remember Jason Sudeikis being in this and he's always good. But the movies are kind of turn into direct to video movies. Um, I'm suspecting that this is not going to be that exactly, but it's not going to be it's not going to be a hit out of the park. So but watch this. It's going to it's going to turn out to be. 78 and i'm gonna be wrong um (laughs) so up next is aftermath oh yeah sorry colossal comes out april 7th up next is aftermath with arnold schwarzenegger scoot mcnary and maggie grace i almost want to say that's scott mcnary but maybe not this is scoot This that is, doesn't sound right. It doesn't say it doesn't sound right. That's that's what you get for googling things. And anyway, um, story follows two strangers who live whose lives become inextricably bound after a devas, devastating plane crash caused by an error of an air traffic controller. Schwarzenegger plays a construction foreman whose wife and daughter were killed in the crash and is burdened with guilt and a need for revenge. Um. Let's take a look. You know what? I'm going to go first on this one. I am very okay. excited for this movie. I have been waiting for uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger to get to the unforgiven stage of his career where he takes his persona, takes the kind of thing that we're doing, that, we're, that we've are that we loved about him for 30 years, but then acknowledges his age, acknowledges where he is in his life, and starts to take more interesting roles. And is it me, or is this the first time we've seen Arnold Schwarzenegger cry on film? Has he ever cried before in any movie? Yes. Oh, all right. <laughs> it was in. Uh, it was actually in a movie he did just not too long ago called Maggie. Oh yes, I yeah. Oh, I and did not see it, was, but. It was actually a zombie movie, um, yeah. but it was a much, much to- toned down, subdued zombie movie. It was about a, his daughter gets bit mm-hmm. by the, the virus, and she doesn't turn right away, but it's like, and there's no cure. So eventually she's going to turn all the way, and he basically has to live with her daughter, his daughter just basically slowly turning into an undead person. And so it was, very, it was a very interesting drama. I wouldn't even call it a horror movie, so... Just the idea of that makes me want to cry, which is why I didn't see it. Yeah, that's... that's I'm like, a... that is not for me. Um, yeah. How was it? Did you see it, Peter? Yeah, it was good. I liked it a lot. And and I, I, I was going to say the exact same thing that you did, which was I, I like that Arnold is choosing movies that kind of are more fitting to his age now. That he's not... He knows that he can't really do the whole action shtick anymore. So he's got to choose these roles, which... Don't make him look weak, but uh, are still are still less than what he was doing before. And I think that's a, a smart way to go about it. Like you said, the Clint Eastwood kind of stage in his career. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think this actually looks pretty good. Um, I, I, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's very action oriented at all. It might be. It, it seems like it's more of a drama. It's like it's just kind of a very heart heart hitting drama. Maybe does that seem what, like what it was to you guys too? You know, it's, yeah. Yeah it, yeah, it is. And I think part of what's interesting about it is the idea that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the guy that's been wronged. 
but he hasn't been wronged by, you know, a biker gang killing his family or something. He's been wronged by this guy that screwed up at work. It's completely heartbreaking. And the idea of somebody, you know, I think 20 years ago you could have thought of like a like a Kurt Russell or like a Michael Douglas playing this role. Um where there, a lot of it is the internal emotional struggle of him dealing with it and deciding, am I going to try to get revenge? My life's falling apart or whatever. But having the persona of Arnold, who we know is capable of great violence and craziness, is kind of interesting. It puts a little thriller spin on it. Um, and one of the things that I thought was interesting is, I can't remember... There's been a lot of research having to do with malpractice. Don't ask me why I know this. And they found that a, a pretty good percentage of malpractice lawsuits could be avoided if doctors would just apologize for screwing up or hospitals would apologize. And it's that kind of, no, we're not going to, we're not going to admit any wrong. We're not going to apologize that actually gets them into a lot of trouble. So it's kind of interesting to see this, that thread in this preview because it's just – he doesn't seem to want anything. He, you know, awful things happen, and he just wants an apology. That's it. And, and, and not getting it can drive you kind of crazy when the need is just so obvious. It's, it seems like a, a pretty human detail or a human thing in this movie that I, I'm, I'm really liking. I'm, I'm – I am interested in it, even though I was very interested in the last couple old Arnold Schwarzenegger ones. There was that one where he was a cop or a, a small town sheriff on the border, I think. I can't even remember what it's Lone oh, Right. Yeah. And boy, I wanted that movie to be good, one? and it was not good. Um, he's He's done a couple of these where I'm hopeful that it's going to be good, and then it turns out, no, it's not. I think it was called The Last Stand. Yes, that was That's, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so. by the way, Scoot McNary is his name. I was just going to say that. <laughs> it's cause, cause Scoot the... Nacho. <laughs> That's right. Scoot. <laughs> actually, the, the link that we're using for the preview is the actual official Lionsgate upload. And it's Scoot twice in that description. So, yeah, it's Scoot. Uh, Peter Brown. What's your prediction? Um, this is a tough one. Uh, 71. 71? Sonia Mansfield. Dang it. I was going to say 70 because Peter, but now Peter said 71. So I'm going to say 75. 75. No, no, no. Okay. No. I'm going to say 65. 65. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go with, you know what I should do to, to claw my way back probably is I should always just go between you two. That's what I should do. <laughs> I shouldn't be one of the outliers. I should always be, I should fit, you know, find the average between so you two numbers. So you're not actually going to try to guess what the scores are. <laughs> you're just going to play. I am. Well, me, th- no. Peter and I against each other. No, here's the thing. Is one, I or think, or maybe Peter and maybe Peter just makes his prediction and then I go one up from Peter. Then what are you gonna do? <laughs> then, then I'll be in trouble. Um, <laughs> is uh, well, no, I'm noticing that I am off, I am very off, and you guys are closer, so I gotta figure out a different number. Um, you know, trying to predict, you know, I and that's part of my strategy is I am dependably off. So in order to <laughs> in order to f- try to decide what the critics' numbers are going to be, I got to take in more information than just my whim. So, so you're pulling a Costanza. No, I'm you pulling. Gotta a... Do the opposite. <laughs> I'm acknowledging. I'm acknowledging a weakness, and I'm trying to fix it. Man, are you are you are you like this with David when he's trying to make his life better, Sonia? Just no. Tap tap tap. Scratch because scratch scratch. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Fine. Um, I'm going to go, you know what? Screw you. I'm going 68 right there. Yeah. Right, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Watch this. It's going to come out and it's going to be like 40. 
and we're all going to be <laughs> screwed. Could very well be. All right. That brings us to Snatched. That's uh, just fun to say. That's right. This one comes out May 12th. Um, Wasn't that the Guy Ritchie movie, right? They're, re- I, they're putting it out again? It's the reboot? <laughs> this I, is the I sequel? Think, <laughs> I think. God, wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> the first one's a, 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 a London underground <laughs> crime movie, and then this one is a Amy Schumer uh, comedy fest. No. Um, so this is 20th Century Fox. Uh, it's about Goldie Hawn and her daughter, Amy Schumer, teaming up as a mother and daughter pairing on a vacation gone awry. Schumer plays an impetuous dreamer who persuades her ultra-conservative mother to travel with her to paradise, but soon they get caught up in an outrageous jungle adventure. Oh! This, let's take a look at it. At the risk of being sexist, I'm going to make Sonya go first. Here we go. go. <laughs> I'm going to make Sonya go first. I'm happy to see Goldie <clears throat> Hawn back, and I am a big Amy Schumer fan. I'm not going to lie. There were a couple of things in this preview that made me laugh. Uh, I think it might be kind of funny. So... Hmm. I don't. I don't think it's <laughs> train wreck. Train wreck was hilarious. Uh, but I think this trailer had moments that kind of made me laugh. It's probably not a very good movie, though. Mm. Oh, that is <laughs> really funny. <laughs> you know what I? Th- it's like a lot of other movies that, like fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. It starts out as something funny, and then it turns into, like, a stupid action movie. Right. And that's what this looks like Indeed. to me. So I probably will be less interested in the action movie part and uh, more in the Goldie Hawn, Amy Schumer part. Mm. So I think this movie is not for you guys. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably a good good statement yeah i i think i don't know why but i kind of feel like i feel a, a amy schumer blowback coming and i think that she's been pushed a lot in the last year or two years and i think some people i think are kind of getting kind of sick of her a little bit uh maybe it's the current political climate or maybe it's because she's so so super outspoken or it's that maybe it's just because she's everywhere um i'm nothing against her I can kind of like, for some reason I just feel like there's like a blowback coming against it, and that's nothing to say this movie. I, I agree with you that it doesn't really look like a very good movie. Um, there were parts in the preview that made me laugh, but I can also look at it and go, "That's not going to be a very good movie." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we've seen a lot of these where the comedians kind of get thrown into uh, kidnapping, or they get you know strung up in a drug cartel, or they're you know, having to find their friend and, you know, they get forced into fighting some action adventure along the way. Like, seems to happen a lot in kind of these yeah. comedies. So, not, definitely not original. It looks like the type of movie that they like, they're like, we got Amy Schumer, she'll make it funny. Yeah. Like, it wasn't going to be, like, it wasn't going to be funny on the page. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I... I like I really do like Amy Schumer. I I did like uh Trainwreck. I thought it could have been like a lot of Judd Apatow movies. I thought it could have been 20 minutes shorter. Exactly 20. Yes, I was going to say 20 minutes shorter. <laughs> um I I do think there's some blowback from Amy Schumer coming not because of the current political climate or anything, but I feel like this happens with a lot of comedians is they get big on stand-up they get really sharp they do a good show or a good first couple of movies then they kind of get comfortable they've been out of nightly stand-up for a couple years they've been out of sharpening their tool for a couple years and they get into you know the vince vaughn steve martin Adam Sandler second stage of their popularity where they usually start doing a lot of mediocre stuff um, 
and to me, this actually feels like a Goldie Hawn movie, like a mediocre Goldie Hawn movie from like the 80s or early 90s. Like, it totally where, does, hmm, yeah. Where she, where she would be playing Amy Schumer's character and uh, Anne Bancroft or something would be playing her mom. Um, and I am not interested in this. And th- this looks like a big... There's, I think there is a problem, and we're going to talk about this in a couple weeks when it comes to TV networks, but I, um, on the Dorking Out show, where big corporate filmmaking... There's just too many cooks in the kitchen. There's too much, too many corporate notes that just, and this is a, tw- a you know, a 20th century Fox major release. And when movies are like that, they just tend to get watered down and beaten up and the scripts get battered and the director's under a lot of pressure and they have a release date, so they got to go for it. And it just ends up not funny. And the thing that did it for me was that shot where she where Goldie Hawn's trying to put sunscreen on Amy Schumer and it's just <laughs> like it's it's you see this in a lot of bad comedies it's the no one would actually act like that you see also this in it's the uh, infomercial thing like where somebody like opens a thing of Tupperware or opens a can or opens a open something and they just fumble it and end up throwing it across <laughs> the kitchen because they're just so ridiculously dumb and uncoordinated. That, <laughs> and you're watching it and it's like, no one would ever really do this. This is stupid. And that's what that joke was. It's like, no one is going to be this ridiculous and over the top and just, ha ha, it's silly. She puts on a lot of sunscreen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that kind of that kind of thought process for what's going into the movie and what's not going into the movie throughout this movie, um, I think it's just, I think it's going to make it mediocre. I think it's, I think this is not going to be good. Um, yeah. But get you can get in line. So comes out on May 12th. Uh, <laughs> Sonya Mansfield. Actually, you know what? No, we're, we're going to do this. We're, we are going to do this in order of who's in first always has to go first. Mm. Who's in second always has to go second. So then I will always go last because. <laughs> this. Peter Brown, what's your number? 36. 36. Oh. Goodness. I'm going right. to say, he says 36. I'm going to say 45. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let me guess. I'm going to guess Chris's score. Okay, 41. Actually, okay, hold on. Because here's the thing. <laughs> Let's look at this. I've done a little research. It's directed by Jonathan Levine. He did 50-50, which was great. 94%. Warm Bodies, didn't see it. Uh, All the Boys Love Mandy Lane, didn't see it. That was 40. The Night Before, uh, with Seth Rogen, 66. Uh, Didn't see that. It was a movie that was much better in theory than it was actually. I I, I, I would say sixty six is a little high, but in ni- two thousand sixteen he did Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Ew, no. Which was thirty five percent. I feel like he is that kind of director where he did some interesting things at the beginning of his career, and now he's in total sellout. Uh studio hack director mode and mr levine if you're listening i apologize for putting it that way but (laughs) that is my prediction so i am gonna say all of that being said i'm gonna say 31 Mm. i think he's i think this is not gonna be good and you watch this is gonna come in at 62 percent and i'm gonna be 30 points off so um not that I am bitter. Which what, br- what was your what was your number again? Tell me one more time. Thirty one. Thirty one. Okay. Why? Because I'm writing it down. Oh well, we're putting it in the document here. But I'm putting it in the blog post. Oh right, that. Oh yes, because so, then we have it on record, so you right. can't lie. That's right. Uh, so this is our behind the scenes moment on how the podcast <laughs> gets created for the three of you 
listeners who care, and the one of which who has listened far enough into this episode to actually hear what I am saying right now. Which brings us to Transformers, <laughs> the first night, Peter Brown's most anticipated movie. Oh yeah, of this and yours. decade. Nope. <laughs> Nope. All right. <laughs> so, You're such a completist. You know what? You know what? I, so listen, this is this is the description. Humans are at war with the Transformers, and Optimus Prime is gone. The key to saving the future lies buried in the secrets of the past and hidden history of Transformers on Earth, which, correct me if I am wrong, Peter, describes literally every single Transformers movie so far. All four of them. That's the that is the uh, description. Am I wrong? It sounds right. I've only seen the very first one. All right, but it sounds eerily familiar. Then why are you wanting to watch? Why why did you put this on the on the docket if you've only seen? Uh... Because I know that you love Transformers. I movies, don't love Transformers, <laughs> and I wanted to talk about it because I wanted to get your opinion as a Transformers movie <laughs> expert. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That is, that is. I, I have to. I have to stop to that. laughing about this. If you, if you had said Transformers movie fan, I would have spent the next half hour ranting about how you're wrong. But unfortunately, if you said expert, <laughs> and I have seen them all, so I have to copy. Exactly, that, so. you are the only one of us that have seen them all. <sighs> I have seen, seen none. None. So you've seen none. I've seen one. You've seen four out of four. Well, you know what. I rest my proverbial case. I'm putting. I'll you, see you in court. Oh, oh, I'm putting you both. I'm putting you <laughs> both unnoticed. This movie comes out June 23rd. We are all going to go see this movie because no. you guys are going to have to talk about what it's like to see a big dumb summer movie. There you go. <laughs> oh. You have to see this movie. It's on the docket. There you go. Um, no. For the rest of the description. Now it's up to unlikely an unlikely alliance of Cade Yeager, Mark Wahlberg. Cade Yeager, listen to That's that. His name? That's, That's his, his name. name. Cade Yeager, you know, like Chuck Yeager, because he's an American hero sure. and an and an English lord played by Anthony Hopkins. Oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. So this is a team up of Anthony Hopkins and Mark Wahlberg. Let's take a look. All right, Peter. Yeah. It is your burden as the front runner <laughs> to give us a number. <laughs> oh, we're not even gonna talk about it. We're just gonna give go right to the numbers. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> what what to say? This is like, oh, if you watched it too, if you're listening to this podcast, you know we're just going straight to the numbers. Yeah, no, there's, there's uh, nothing to say. Is there anything that you want to say? No. All right, Sonia. Is there anything <laughs> that you would like to say? Uh no. Uh, actually, that's not true. I do have something to say. I just wanted to mention that the story is by Akiva Goldsman, yeah. who I believe is also working on Star Trek Discovery. Uh -oh. And I really just want to mention it because I want to make Smith cry. Oh, God, you're so <laughs> cruel. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about Akiva Goldsman is he's attached to a lot of awful things. <laughs> yes. The end. No. Um, <laughs> he wrote Batman and Robin. He wrote the big screen adaptation of Lost in Space. He <laughs> wrote uh, Batman Forever, I believe. He has a reputation, a really damaged reputation. Um, and he is the head. What Paramount is doing with these Transformers movies is they're trying to get into the connected world business or whatever. So they've actually started a writer's room and I believe Akiva Goldsman is the head of the writer's room um, at Paramount uh, shepherding the connected universe Transformers movies. Uh, so, But he is also an Oscar-winning screenplay writer. Screen, screen, well, he wrote, he's uh, an Oscar -winning he wrote screenwriter. A Beautiful Mind, which, you know, right. I'm actually not like a super fan of, so that's not a huge selling point to me. Yeah, I, I liked it, but it's... You know, it's not one of my favorite Ron Howard movies, and I would be 
definitely willing to bet because you see Akiva Goldsman, qual- his quality drop off when he works with other people. I would bet that there's a lot of Ron Howard, you better fix this, notes that had to do with that. Um, right. So so wait a minute. Yeah. So we'll see. So, so the guy who is writing Star Trek Discovery, or one of the writers of Star Trek Discovery, is the same guy who wrote, and I quote Chris Smith, saying, the worst movie experience I've ever had was when I went to go see Batman and Robin. Uh, He's yes. writing the new series. No, he's not. My understanding is he's not writing the new series. He's one of the executive producers, but he's not the main hands-on showrunner. But he's in there. Okay. He's in the mix. Like, after Ooh. after uh, Brian uh, Fuller left, Akiva Goldsman came on. There's still uh, some... I think the guys that ran uh, Fringe are actually the showrunners of Star Trek Mm. Discovery. So we'll see. Star Trek Discovery is in the Star Wars Rogue One. They just did a bunch of reshoots rumor phase where it could be really great. It could be really awesome. Um a little birdie has told me that this is an epic Star Trek show unlike anything we've seen before, and it's fantastic. It really hmm. is shooting for the uh, Game of Thrones bullseye and getting close to hitting it. But who knows? The rumors right. are crazy and rampant right now, so God only knows what the actual story is. All of that being said, you put Akiva Goldsman together with Michael Bay, and holy smokes... That could be... It's a perfect oh, man. storm. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a dumpster fire. You know what's, what, is, what is interesting? Actually, what is interesting is I'm looking at uh, Michael Bay's uh, page on Rotten Tomatoes. He is the executive producer of Ouija. Or he's the producer, not even the executive pro- producer, of 2014's movie Ouija which got a 7, 7%. <laughs> then he was the producer of 2016's Ouija, The Origin of Evil, which got an 82%. Can you, the, the, the sequel... That's a huge jump. The sequel went up 75 yeah. points. That's crazy. That is crazy. Actually, I think I, I think now that I think about it, I think I saw, I think maybe I saw Ouija, and it was actually pretty good. Um, I'm not a huge horror guy, but all right. So all of that being said, my score is 25. I am gonna go first. I'm gonna looking looking at where these movies have gone. I don't think this is gonna be the worst Transformers movie, but I think it's gonna have a lot of trouble. I think it's gonna be awful. Uh, the highest was 57. That was the first one. Then the next highest, I believe, was is 35. Um, and Transformers movies have gone all the way down to uh, 19, 18 and 19. Yeah. So that lines up with my prediction. Yeah. So what's your what's your prediction? 15. 15. Oh wow! You're gonna think it's the the worst one of all, huh? I do. All right, Sonia, what's your prediction? Uh, I'm kind of with Peter here, so I'm going to go 20. 20. Oh, look at you. All right. Is, does anybody... So, yeah, Transformers comes out June 23rd. Let's do a little review. Smith will be there. Snatched. Opening. We're all going to be there. Snatched. <laughs> Snatched will come out uh, May 12th. Aftermath comes out April 7th. Colossal comes out April 7th. Wilson comes out March 24th. The Belko Experiments comes out March 17th. And Power Rangers comes out March 24th. So tell us what you think. Come to our Facebook page, etc., etc. Sonia Mansfield, is there anything else that you would like to say uh, on any of these movies? Any thoughts? I just want to say... Smith loves Transformers. All right, fine. Screw <laughs> you. And goodbye. Peter? <laughs> I'll just say goodbye. Bye! Bye. 
Dorking Out About Trailers can be found on Twitter at Dorking Out Show, where you can also find Chris at Jet Jurgens, Sonia at The Sonia Show, and Peter Brown at Peter Brown AX. You can read about Sonia's random adventures at thesoniashow.com. You can keep track of the progress of my novel, Jet Jurgens and the Infinity Key, at jetjurgens.com. You can also sign up for the mailing list to get free chapters, early chapters, beta reading material, and basically just the book. So go there. You can also find out all about our other show, Dorking Out, at dorkingoutshow.com. While you're over there, you can support us by giving us a review on iTunes. We have a handy-dandy link to take you over to iTunes where you can leave your five-star rating and your review in iTunes, which helps us get more listeners. We do it for your podcast. This has been a presentation of Rocket Spots Media.